chance of being offered for Margaret uh, less. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You were sent to all sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Your almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before. Who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus, whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do? my brothers. Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises made to you and to your children, and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside the restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, 
and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that, free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you had gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. <coughs> the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and mine know me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter the sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens for him, and the sheep hear his voice as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Then he, when he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. For who comes before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved, and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and to slaughter and destroy. I come so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. <clears throat> the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's Gospel, Jesus begins to refer to himself as the Good Shepherd. He's attempting to entice the arrogant and self-righteous Pharisees to open their hearts up to him. So he gives them this image to think about. He reminds them of how tender the relationship is between a shepherd and his sheep. There's an intimate bond that is built 
based on trust and surrender in which the sheep rely on the shepherd. And the good shepherd in turn loves his sheep and he spends his life tending their needs. That's why he tells the Pharisees, the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And he walks ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. See, the good shepherd knows them so well, he knows them by name, and they too recognize his voice. He makes a point that the shepherd doesn't have just a vague knowledge of the sheep, but he has a personal and intimate familiarity with them. So much so that he refers later on in that passage to his own close relationship with his heavenly father as being the ultimate goal of the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep. His relationship with the Heavenly Father has always been based on trust and surrender. Throughout the Gospels, we read how Jesus confirms his trust and surrender to his Father, even up to the very end, when he speaks his last words, into your hands I commend my spirit. Jesus wants to win back the trust and surrender of the Pharisees that they once had in God. He wants to call them back to those who have started to go their own way, maybe have thought God had abandoned them, and they're going to find their own way to heaven. He came back to win their lost trust in God that had been shattered, I believe, from the many hard years of oppression from the Romans. You see, that can happen. Difficult, stressful things that enter our life can cause us to think God does not care. He's abandoned us. He's left us alone. So maybe a bad childhood, maybe a bad marriage, maybe a difficult relationship at work, maybe financial issues. These kind of stressful things in our life make us think, where is God? Where is he? He doesn't care. I'm going to go my own way. And that could have happened to the Pharisees through the many, many years of oppression by the Romans and how cruel they were to the Jews. Maybe they have lost their ability to trust and surrender everything over to God. Jesus proves God's love for them by his self-giving and his merciful acts. He would spend his days healing the sick, exercising the possessed, and forgiving those who were lost in sin. He is the good shepherd that leads the flock to these rich pastures of forgiveness and peace. And he calls us to those very same pastures he wants us to surrender ourselves over to him. He wants us to surrender our fears, our hurts, our resentments, our bitterness, our pride, and our self-centeredness. He wants us to surrender those things in our life that happened to us that maybe we said God doesn't care. God's not involved. God doesn't really know me. He wants us to surrender those things into his hands. His passion, his death, his resurrection is his proof of his love for us. Jesus gave up his own life. He freely suffered what should have been our punishment for our sins. He took our death upon himself and spared us. Do we really see this as his gift to us? We really think our Lord loves us in that deep way. Jesus is the good shepherd that we can trust. He is the one who cares more about our lives than we do. He tells us that he is not the hired man who sees the wolf and runs away, but the good shepherd who fights for his sheep, the one that knows us by name. We live in troubled times, yes, and fear and chaos certainly surround us all around the world today. 
But now is not the time to think God has abandoned us. But he's gone. And now is the time to renew our trust in Jesus Christ, our good shepherd. Remember how much he loves us, how he wants to be close to each one of us. Make an act of trust when you feel fear rising in your heart. Surrender over to him anything that troubles your heart and then simply tell him, Jesus, I trust in you. Say it often throughout the day and know that the Good Shepherd came so that we may not only have life, but abundant life. Please stand to proclaim our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, free <coughs> in all things are made. For our study, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified and the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Catholic Church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and life of the world to come. Amen. And now we bring our petitions up to our loving Lord. For the bishops, the shepherds of the church, that they may be filled with the zeal and fervor of divine love for God's people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will grant our civil leaders the grace to follow God's will in governing the people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our parish will grow in holiness with deeper trust in the Good Shepherd, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection during this pandemic and God's healing touch for those affected by it, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For us to become instruments of mercy within our families, to our fellow parishioners, and to everyone we meet, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to surrender our cares and concerns to the Good Shepherd and open our interior ears to hear his voice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, it is in great confidence that we lift our petitions to you, knowing well if it's for our good, you'll grant them to us. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and to become for us the bread of life. 
Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For the divine and work of human hands, it has become our spiritual grain. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and blemish sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, uniting governor throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all those who hold him to the truth and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer this sacrifice of praise or the offer for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, gracious, accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace. We command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so may become for us the body and blood of our most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
And the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven to, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, in need of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us this pure victim this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as you once were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, life, and peace. Bless also your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with light, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now. 